it's um, it's something that I grew up dreaming of. The match score, Stewart. Yes, they do. I'm Ollie Lawrence. I play centre for England rugby. So I grew up, uh, grew up in Birmingham, a um, place called Bearwood. That's not too far from like Edgebaston and Harborn. A few parks nearby. Lived on this road that kind of interchanges through to a few others. Grew up with my parents, no siblings, just me. Obviously, yeah, it was um, pretty chaotic in the house with, at times, with just me. No one to fight my own corners. But yeah, no, I grew up there. I mean, I moved, moved out when I was uh, 18 and moved to Worcester. My dad used to play for Mosley and he sent me along there and I started playing like the tag rugby tournaments and I just kind of like loved it, it was real good fun. I was, I was quite good at it when I was younger because I was a bit bigger than like the other kids my age and then as, as I grew up I just I kept on kept on sticking at it. I played a few other sports as well here and there but yeah no I kind of I, I loved playing rugby from the start. It wasn't my favourite sport but it's definitely something that I think I took to quite well. Was there any teachers at the time that almost recognised your ability in sport, that maybe you were a bit of a cheeky chap but they kind of guided you to make sure that you concentrated on those aspects? Yeah, probably when I went to secondary school um, at Old Swinford, my coach, Simon Dawes, he did a bit with the uh, younger lads and then also with the first team. He was probably one of the, one of the coaches that kind of took me to one side when I, was, when I was growing up and kind of led me along that path really, I guess that early journey of developing from um, that young kid into like a, a young adult and I still speak to him now and he's definitely one of those, one of those inspirational coaches that had the time of day for me and, and had that patience and really had my best interests at heart and that's something I'll always be thankful for. I left Old Swinford when I was 16. It was a tough decision really because I had all my friends and stuff there but I kind of I wanted to see how I'd go at like a higher end school in terms of with, um, with the rugby side of, the side of things and I was fortunate enough to get a, a scholarship at Bromsgrove. So I went there for sixth form and I think that's really where I kind of took my rugby kind of to another level. I'd, I hadn't really seen it as, as a job opportunity. Rugby, I'd always seen it as fun and I think that's really where I went to went to Bromsgrove and I realised oh, I could give this a go here and then potentially get a contract to at Worcester. I missed the window, my, my coach at the time. I remember him sitting down with me, him and Mr. Mullen, very early on and saying that in terms of coaching, there wasn't too much that they could they could really teach me that was gonna make me like a 10, 10 times better player. It was more to do with my off the field stuff and how I could work within the team and, and lead people and use the people around me to be a better player. And that and that's something that I really took took on board and, and really enjoyed in my, uh, in, my, uh, in my stages at, um, at Bromsgrove in sixth form. So yeah, obviously then I went on to join Worcester when I was 18 at school. I really enjoyed it to be fair to start with. I, I kind of was thrown at the deep end, went on the first team's pre-season to Spain and was given an opportunity quite early on in the season to, to represent the senior team and kind of just went from there really. And in rugby, there's, there's, there's injuries and, and there's rotation and there was a couple of injuries in my position which gave me that opportunity to, to make my debut in the Prem um, against Exeter, I think in like October or November 2018. And yeah, I, I loved it. I loved being in, in that professional environment and playing around all these players that I grew up watching and it was, it was special. Um, and then soon after that, it was kind of, I wanted their role, I wanted to be the number one. And then soon after I managed to transition into being one of the first choices. Yeah, it was a difficult period, obviously, everything that happened at Worcester. It's not something that I ever thought that would ever happen in professional sport, let alone to me personally. And I think that transition from going to not having a club to being on loan, Obviously at Bath and then eventually signing for them was um, was a big turning point in my career. It was off the back of having an, a bit of a, an injury prone season where I didn't really play many games. And I went to Bath with knowing that I've, I've got an opportunity here that some of my other teammates didn't have and I wasn't going to let that go. And I had to mature a lot in that time and develop a lot of a lot of skills off the field because I was, I was working with a load of new players that I'd never met before. And it was hard, like I can't say it was easy. And I'm, um, but at the same time, I'm not going to complain because I, I was fortunate enough to get that opportunity. And I guess, in a way, I hope I, I hope I managed to take take the opportunity this season with Bath and help them help them push up the push up the table and progress on. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next season as well. But back have it back. Oh, they're going to score. <laughs> Only Lawrence may well have just snatched champion. Cup rugby next season. Bristol pickpocketed by the neighbours. It's difficult, really. Like obviously, people usually say their debuts are their their biggest things, but it was tif it was weird for me because my debut was during COVID. I remember I played over in Italy, and 
there was obviously there was, there was no fans at all. It was my first game. It was like it was almost anticlimactic. It was it was weird. But it was a hell of a, an experience to be out there and then to celebrate. Obviously, they ended up winning the Six Nations. And I was in the hotel with the boys after we watching watching the other game to see how that result that result panned out. And that was really special. So that's definitely up there. But I think being involved this time around in the Six Nations and when we went away in Cardiff, that was probably a, a big turning point for me because the back of being on the bench in the first game against Scotland, starting the next one against Italy and then being backed again um, by Steve in the third game and it, it kind of felt like I was getting some momentum with things and that's the first time really in, in, a, in an English shirt I felt like I'd been able to get that. So that was pretty, pretty special for me. I think that whole day itself, first time ever playing um, at the Principality and then obviously getting the win and scoring that try in the corner was, was um, definitely a memorable moment for me and having my family and, and partner there as well was, um, was also really good. They must score, Stewart! Yes, they do! Ollie Lawrence! And England put their heavy boots on the wheels! So I got the medal and I kind of um, I went to go see my mum I and mean, she was a bit overwhelmed, a bit upset and I kind of just, I, in that moment, I just gave her the medal. It was just kind of a nice gesture to give to her because to me, obviously, it's always a privilege to, to play for England and to get man of match even better, but that wasn't the important thing for me. It was, it was, I always played rugby to start with to, to make my parents proud and that moment was, was, was really big for them and especially for her at that, uh, at that time. I thought, you know, just this small gesture could go a long way for her and that medal will mean more to her than it will to me. So yeah, obviously you guys managed to catch, capture it on camera. Um, luckily, you didn't see me getting all, all emotional, so I was just glad I was facing away from it. Yeah, my parents are, are really important to me. They've been a special part of my life, obviously growing up. They've sacrificed a lot um, in certain aspects of their life to, to put me in the position where I, I am now. Um, and I'll always be grateful for that. And um, I take certain things from each of them in terms of their characteristics and personal, personalities. And, I, and like I just said then, like I'm a, I'm a big family man. I like to I like to go home and see my see my family. Probably don't go back as much as I used to now being in Bath. And I know they they miss seeing me and stuff. But having them at games and and being able to share those moments is 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 really nice. Just because it, it means that everything that happened in in the, in the past and everything we've went through with me growing up, it kind of there's some reward at the end of it, and that's pretty special. And hopefully now I can keep making them proud and keep keep doing my bit and they can keep enjoying watching from the sideline and not having to drive me to games all over the country anymore. I got my mum and my dad tattooed on me because those are the two people that meant the most to me. In my growing up I wanted that to be on show kind of every time that I um, stepped on the field and I've had a few other bits and bobs like my nan's birth year and bits of when I was injured and just a few scattered bits really. They all have their own individual meaning. There's some on my back as well which I have a, I have a few more and I think they're all personal to me and it's something that I don't, I don't mind sharing with people if they ask, but, um, but yeah, no, I'm not one of those people that just gets random things. Everything that I have uh, has a small meaning and I, I think that's quite nice. But that's just to do with like the only child kind of side of me and the fact like it's okay not to, to fit in um, to every single situation that you're involved in and you're never going to fit into every piece of the jigsaw and that was kind of the whole meaning behind that and that's something that I, I got a couple of years ago and I thought would fit quite well with me. Yeah, I think they'll be incredibly proud. I think the whole family is, to be honest with you. It's, um, it's something that I grew up dreaming of. And then you get to a stage where you think, is it going to happen, is it not? And then to now be included in that squad is, yeah, it's really surreal. I remember when I told my parents, they were, they were pretty emotional and, and really happy for me. I and mean, I'm just, I can't wait to get the opportunity to go and represent my country in a World Cup.